Hi, I'm Bob Hasegawa, your state senator for the 11th Legislative District. And since we're between sessions right now, I thought I'd take a few minutes to talk with you about a project I've been working on for a few years now to create a publicly owned state bank we're calling the Washington Investment Trust. So the concept is right now when the state collects your tax revenue, you probably think it just goes straight to the treasury and the state gets to use it for our benefit, right? Well, the state has to have a bank account, just like anybody who's holding money. And the state's bank account is at the Bank of America. So essentially, we are not actually using our tax dollars for the sole benefit of the taxpayers. The bank, who is the depositor for your tax dollars, is getting to use your money for their benefit. So the concept that I've been working on through this public bank that we're trying to create is to create an institution where your tax dollars are held by the people of the state for the benefit of the people of the state. In other words, we could create a resource for ourselves using our tax dollars in a much more smart way than we're doing now to do things like help small businesses and support small business lending in our community by participating and working collectively with community banks, for instance. We could provide a way to offer low-interest student loans, which is such a problem with our higher ed system right now. We could provide capital for building roads and critical infrastructure like water and sewer systems and even schools. Think if we could do that at a rate lower than what we could get by having to sell bonds through Wall Street. And in the meantime, we would also, by repaying the loan to ourselves and borrowing from ourselves, we're actually generating more revenue for the people of our state. So it just makes all kinds of sense. It's smart, good government. It's smart use of taxpayers' dollars for the benefit of the state of Washington. And it fixes a lot of our access to capital problems that we have, not only as a state, but out there in the local economies as well. So this concept uh, about a state bank, publicly owned state bank, is not unique. In fact, most developing countries in the world have been able to finance their development by using their money smartly like this, like for instance, the BRIC companies, that, as they're referred to, Brazil, Russia, India, and China, Japan, France, Germany has a pretty mature built-out system. But here in the United States, it's not readily practiced. However, there is one state in the country that does have its own publicly owned bank, and that is North Dakota, of all places. The Bank of North Dakota was founded back in 1919 because they were facing the same kind of problems that we were facing as a state of Washington back around the turn of the 20th century where they felt like they had lost control of their own financial system and their own livelihoods uh, because their, their lives were being dictated not just by the financial markets and the institutions that were out of Wall Street, but also the shippers who regulated their um, rates and uh, profit margins, uh, which were going to the shippers. So in 1919, North Dakota decided they were going to create their own public infrastructure. They modeled it after, actually, the Port of Seattle model, which we created out here to address a lot of those issues. But they went one step further, not just to create their own publicly owned milling and granary system, but they also created a state bank to help finance all of their economic development. So that state bank in North Dakota has proven to be a huge base of support for that state. Over the years, it's returned over a half a billion dollars in revenue back to the state's general fund, which means that the state could create a lot of programs and not have to raise taxes to do it. So that's the model that I'm going after with the Washington Investment Trust. Um, so I hope that you really um, take a close look. If you want to, you can go to their website. It's banknd.nd.gov to see the type of programs and how they're using their bank to help their local economy. So this bill has been around for, I think, five years now. A few years ago, when I was in the House, uh, 
the bill actually mustered 44 co-sponsors, which is the most co-sponsors of any bill that session in the legislature. Even though we had so many co-sponsors on it, the critical people who did not sign it were the ones who were on the banking committee. So unfortunately, the bill died because I couldn't get it passed out of the banking committee in the House of Representatives. That hasn't deterred us. I know that it, this is a long-term plan. So we'll just keep building, and part of this is to educate you about this concept, because if you think it's a good idea, hopefully you can talk to your friends and neighbors and family members around the state to help think it out. And if you have thoughts about this, please feel free to contact me at my legislative email address, which is bob.hasegawa at ledge.wa.gov. So that's B-O-B dot H-A-S-E g-a-w-a at l-e-g dot w-a dot g-o-v. Or you can call my office at 360-786-7616. And even if you just want to chat, you know, feel free to call my office and set up a, a coffee or something. I'd love to spend a little time think, uh, talking with you about what you think about state government, so, and especially the state bank project. So anyway, that's it for now. I'll do a follow-up piece to tell you about how uh, we might be able to use this in, to help solve the financial problem we have in our medical and recreational marijuana marketplace that we're creating right now. But for now, I'm Bob Hasegawa, your state senator for the 11th Legislative District, and thanks for watching.